Places for the top of Act One. Places, please. The way Wicked began was that I had come across the book and immediately called my lawyer and said, okay, someone has the rights to this book, um, but I have to do this if I possibly can because it's the best idea I've ever heard. <laughs> I was developing a screenplay based on Gregory Maguire's novel, but something was lacking, the, something in the world, something in the storytelling. And one day, I got a phone call from Stephen Schwartz. Stephen said, this is a novel that would be great if it were musicalized. And the moment he said it, the light bulb went off in my head, and I thought, that's what's missing here. The wickedest witch there ever was, the enemy of all of us. Wicked is the untold story of the Witches of Oz. The whole show is basically their relationship. It begins with them as extremely reluctant roommates. It is this feeling so sudden and new. I felt the moment I laid eyes on you. My pulse is rushing. My head is reeling. My face is flushing. What is this feeling? It's about two women and their friendship. How at first that they immediately clash and ultimately become very, very important in each other's lives and change each other's lives. Loathing, unadulterated loathing for your face, your voice, your clothing. Let's just say, I loathe it all. It's about becoming your true self. Which road you're going to take and how you do it. You take the higher road, you take the road with more risks, you take the road that's safer. <laughs> Wicked seems to me a thinking man's Disney kind of show. This has a little more intelligence and uh, wit and sophistication. There's all this stuff you don't know about what happened in Oz. Things that we think we know that we don't know. Assumptions that we have made that we don't even realize that we've made. How we judge people how history judges people. <laughs> Wicked is really about the story of the Wizard of Oz, but yet it's the other side of it. It's, it's finding, how, finding out how those, uh, the green woman who is the Wicked Witch of the West and the blonde lady who is Glenda the Good Witch, um, who we basically know, but how they came about. Ready? One, two, three, four. I knew that the show needed to dance. I didn't know what the style of dance should be. I knew that the world was going to be a different world and a world that we've never experienced before. And I knew that anything that I did would have to be a little bit strange. <laughs> Michael Bennett and Bob Fosse, I think, were the strongest influences on me. Michael Bennett was a genius with choreographing the whole stage, just moving it around and making the whole thing dance. And then there's Bob Fosse, who is meticulous about being very precise about finger turns and hand turn and little wrist movements and almost doing nothing and being very, very specific about no one gave him dance steps. It was like what he came up with is what he gave you and that's what you did. Yes, it's built on classical dance, modern dance, contemporary dance. It's all of that stuff. One, two. But it needed to be twisted so, so I was in a sense, creating another vocabulary just for Wicked. I keep telling the dancers in the ensemble, they, you can't do anything that you would be comfortable with doing in any other show. And if it is comfortable for you, and if it's something that you naturally do, you have to second guess it and go, no, this can't be right. Wayne Salento, our choreographer, brilliant, but a madman. You know, I'm the bad boy who gets everybody down to the Oz Dust ballroom for some partying. So there's a lot of dance, and it's, and I'm old. Ow. Which way the party? Which way? Which way's the next keg of winky beer? Which way? We'll start it out and take it, and then get romantic. I'll be the Chanticleer. Big one and over, and now it's the party. The moment
moments of choreography are very short, very powerful. For me, the challenge was to interject pieces of choreography that kind of snapped the audience back, entertained them, and moved the story along. You really need to collaborate with the director and, and really get, you know, almost like interwoven with each other's heads. Perfect. Joe. Do you want me to actually get rid of them with people closing them in like we talked originally? Or do you... I like it when I just saw that, that we yeah. see Yeah, them. so yeah. we didn't close them in. That's OK, right? Yeah. OK, Christy, jump out. Marcus, jump in. Corinne, jump. Jump. Uh, EO, jump back. Corinne, jump this way. And you jump that way. OK, let's try that. In the olden days, chorus people were just chorus people. <laughs> Dancers did the dancing, and the singers did the singing. That separation does not exist anymore. Everyone has to really do everything. slightly different process that a lot of people do now. Most people do do a workshop. We didn't do a workshop. We did a number of readings over the course of two, I think, two and years or two and a half years. Um, but readings where you sit, everyone sat in their chairs and nobody moved ever. <laughs> you know, no staging whatsoever. About the third or fourth reading, I, I, um, we reached the point where we felt we had all gone as far, Mark and Winnie and I had gone as far as we could just by ourselves, and it was time to get a director who's obviously, um, in addition to having to put the show on the stage, is usually or can be extremely helpful dramaturgically. And we were very fortunate enough to be able to get Joe Montello, who has, in fact, been extremely valuable dramaturgically. Okay, guys, here's, we're going to just reorder this a little bit. Ready? Everybody listen up? director answers all of the questions, uh, takes all of the blame. There's a combination probably of dad or mom, uh, a therapist, uh, ho hopefully someone who has a little vision, and someone who can just lead the troops. So maybe you can sort of move center a little bit. Yes, I can. So that you really have to find a way to marshal the troops at all times and say, we're going in this direction, let's go. Um, and you can't hesitate or they can smell it. Hot spot right that, here. If she gets the higher register going, it's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> Joe felt that there were so many visual demands of the show, because it's Oz, that it was gonna be hard to, to tell much more from a, a workshop than from a reading, and that therefore, for better or worse, we had to do a production.